Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is my first Starseed reading for 2021. I actually wanted to show you that these decks that I just bought are still in the plastic wrap. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> they are brand new. I've actually been wanting to make this video, like make a new video for several days now, but weird things kept getting in the way or I had lots of private readings, so I couldn't do any YouTube readings. <laughs> and then I received some guidance to buy this deck, the Osho Zen Tarot, which I've known about this for quite a while and I've been wanting it and wanting it, but you know, it was just never the right time to get it. And very specifically, the blue beings actually like basically told me uh, it was time to buy this. So then I understood that I was supposed to, for this brand new year, brand new energy, use two brand new decks. And I think this is just so reflective of how new the energy is right now. This is an entirely, this is the new beginning we've been waiting for. I know so many of my readings over the past few months have been like, the new start is coming. The transformation is coming. This, this, and this is coming, but it's, it's finally here. We're, we're in it. Um, and I'm sure you guys are feeling it. And the other deck, I don't know anything about this. Crystal Oversoul cards. This caught my eye and I knew I had to have it. I don't know anything about it. So th this reading is going to be entirely just open and on the fly. And I am going to go, you know, open these off camera because, you know, it'll be loud and plasticky and all that. But I just had to show you so you could feel how new this is. So I will be right back with all the cards. Okay, one more sneak peek. I just took this out of the box. This is the Osho Zen Tarot <laughs> and it's still in the plastic wrap, but it's consciousness. Brand new consciousness. Brand new consciousness. And I think I would like to talk about, yeah, this will probably be in the thumbnail or the title of the video or something, but the word star blossom. I did not come up with that. Um, one of my beautiful soul sisters, one of my Hadarian soul sisters, um, pointed out something that's been circulating on social media. I don't know who originally came up with it. This idea that we are no longer just star seeds, we are star blossoms. And I found that to be so powerful because, you know, we're not just these little buried seeds. We're not these sleeping star seeds waiting to wake up. We have finally burst up out of the earth and the plant has grown and we've actually been, you know, the flower, the bud has grown and the bud is blossoming, right? The flower is blossoming, the flower is opening up. That's what I think this is all about. The flower, we are, we are these like star flowers opening up. And as we open, not only are we receiving so much more, like how many levels can you take that, right? Our consciousness is literally opening up. We are receiving more. We are remembering more. We are learning more. We are activating our soul gifts. We are activating our missions. But, and we are also showing the world who we are, like the peony, the flower, the peony opening up and showing the world who we really are. This is like, I'm excited. Everything is finally getting underway. <laughs> so I just, I had to mention that. I'll be back again with the cards. Okay, here we go. Very first star seed reading for not just star seeds, for star blossoms <laughs> of 2021. And this is going to be entirely off the cuff and improvisational. I don't know this deck. I don't know this spread. I literally uh, just flipped open the booklet that came with this deck and picked this spread. This is the flying bird spread. And it shows us where we are taking off from, how we are, what we are afraid of, how we are reacting to the fear, how we can consciously and unconsciously kind of take action to work through the fear and essentially where we are ultimately heading. So I haven't looked up any of the, you know, official meanings for these cards. I'm just going to read them as they come. So if you know this deck and I get it all wrong, um, I'm sorry. This is just, <laughs> this is just how we're going to do it because I feel like Brand new, brand new energy today. Everything's brand new. We're just going to roll with it. And then maybe I'll see about those Oracle cards that I know nothing about as well. So I was drawn to this right away because I feel like we are lifting off, like we are birds lifting off, like we are this flower opening up. And, you know, we have the flower of life pattern here that I actually just had 
lying here and decided to roll with. So we're using that as well. But okay, so this card down here, moment to moment, this is where what we are lifting off from. This is our starting point, our launch pad, if you will, moment to moment. And I love this guy with this psychedelic background. This is kind of how I've been feeling lately. I have, have you guys been noticing um, an incredible uptick in synchronicity to, you know, I know a lot of you probably are, have gotten used to a certain level of synchronicity in your life, um, as have I, but lately it's been getting kind of incredible to the point where I'll be watching some YouTube video and then something irritating will distract me. I'll have to get up and deal with it. And then in the process, I will think a whole bunch of things or hear people to say things and I'll come back down, hit play, and <laughs> the video will be essentially saying what I just experienced. And I'm like, wow, like that is how go with the flow I am becoming. Um, I'm getting really excited to go with the flow, to never have a plan. And every time even a little irritation comes up, I'm like, well, let's just roll with this because clearly this is all meant to be because my life just keeps falling into place. Even if there's still irritations and things that I don't like, it ends up all just being part of this pattern. And I think that's what this card is about, living your life moment to moment. Um, I don't know if you guys... Um, I know some of you do. Um, I don't know how many of you follow Livia Devi. She's a trans channel. She channels um, the Seventh Dimensional Arcturian Collective. And she made a post on Instagram about how she received, she described it, she said she received a blessing from the divine to live her life as a magical unfolding of synchronicity. And I was like, yes, I think we are all feeling that. <laughs> we are all feeling that. So that is our base energy 2021 is going to be magical. And for everybody watching this later on, this is absolutely timeless. You're syncing up with this energy whenever you're supposed to. So, you know, but for a lot of us, this is 2021 going to be even more magical than the magic we had been experiencing in the past year. And I think <laughs> we get to be like frolicking down the path, almost feeling like a fairy, feeling so excited about just walking into the unknown because I think we are all learning, you know, we're all in a different level of this. Some people are just starting to feel how magical life can be and are just starting to see the synchronicities and others of us are really <laughs> kind of getting deep into it. But we're all in this certain bandwidth of just falling in love with life and being able to really, really more than we have before, surrender to the divine and just go with the flow because the flow is magical. And this is about learning to trust, learning to trust that everything is unfolding perfectly. And funnily enough, the <laughs> thing we are afraid of, this is our, our fear, the fear of flying, the fear of flying, this is the fool. That'll have to do. It's dark outside here and that's always makes it hard to film um, <laughs> with my little lamps. But look at this fool. This is our fear of flying. He, in this depiction, if you can see, he's actually stepped off the cliff. <laughs> and right now we don't know if he's going to fall or if he's going to fly. You know, most often the fool is depicted as somebody walking off into an adventure who, and like, an unknown adventure, but I love this. He's literally stepped off the cliff. That's how much he trusts. He understands that, yes, on a physical level, he might fall. Yes, on a human level, this seems insane. He's just going to fall. Who would step off the cliff? But <laughs> um, Clearly, this person has developed such a level of trust that he is feeling like he might actually be able to fly and and walk right off the cliff and i think this is that tug of war we're all kind of going through where we're feeling the magic feeling the synchronicity learning to trust but then also kind of wibble wobbling back and forth going no that our human minds coming up and going no that's crazy you know no i'll never be able to do that uh, no, like life can't possibly be this good. You know, when's the other shoe going to drop? When are things going to get um, worse? Or <laughs> always worrying about, you know, the bills, paying the rent, still worrying. There's still that vestige of the human mind. And on a higher level, I think this is also 
afraid of flying, actually. It's like, I'm sure you guys have all astrally traveled, like, accidentally, inadvertently in your dreams. Um, so for those of you who have, like, a little glimmer or a little bit of a memory of any kind of astral travel or when you feel beings come in with you, you know, any kind of spiritual experience or mystical experience where it's really intense and you feel like your consciousness might go somewhere or you feel like some consciousness is coming in any or any anything just feels magical you know we always think oh i want that i want that i want that but then when it comes in sometimes it's like oh no wait i'm not ready i'm not ready <laughs> kind of like you know for all of you who are waiting to be able to go up to a spaceship right it's like we think we're ready for that but if a spaceship were to crash into the room right now and like pick you up you would be like probably most of you would probably be a little freaked out like like I would be you know I don't have any conscious memories of going up to a ship because I know I'm not ready for that yet we're still afraid of flying we're afraid of flying and it's funny right we're both we're afraid to trust but we're also afraid to trust too much we're afraid of these intense experiences that I think we all know are coming for us they're coming down the pipe we're afraid of them just as much as we're afraid to trust in them in the first place. I know that that's like a paradox, but I, th I think that's where we're at. Okay, and our response to the fear, in the book this is actually described as the response hyphen ability, our response ability. Clearly there's a play on words there. Is this our response to the fear or is it our responsibility to the fear? I think if we're reacting to the to our fears like unconsciously in an unhealthy way, that is our response to the fear. But we can, you know, if we consciously look at our fear and consciously work through it, then we can, that, that is our responsible reaction to the fear. That is our responsibility to our own selves to look after ourselves and to work through the fear. Interest, interesting with this silence card. Kind of, I think there's two possible things going on here. On the one hand, some of us might be afraid to talk about our fears, afraid to talk through them, maybe um, feeling like we don't have anybody to talk through them with. And if you're feeling like you don't have anybody to talk through all of these crazy experiences with, that's probably going to change this year because 2021 is going to be all about, you know, people keep calling it the year of unity and we have all this Aquarius energy. I'm already like seeing this and I know... Um, a lot of you that have already been talking to, you know, we're all connecting. We are all finding our tribe. And if you haven't found your tribe yet, don't worry. You're, you're going to synchronize with them when it's perfect. And then I think the invitation here is to consciously work through our fears to find that space of silence of mind, dropping out of your mind, dropping into your heart space, you know, practicing meditation, practicing neutral observation. And if you can really silence your mind, because fear is a minded thing, right? Fear is <laughs> in our heads. Fear is our human mental reaction to things. And I mean, it's also in our bodies. It's a biological reaction, right? That why are we afraid of the darkness? Why are we afraid of the night? Well, because our, you know, biological ancestors <laughs> would get killed at night. You know, we're afraid of things in the dark. We're afraid of spiders and snakes because they're poisonous and they kill us. All of these biological and minded based reactions to get out of that you know having to drop into our heart space and find silence in the mental body is the ideal way of working through these fears even when you're faced with something very frightening and i think more and more of us are having to go through that fear phase of awakening. I'm hoping most of you have already gotten through that because the, the fear phase of awakening is terrible, right? You're just terrified all the time. You know, your third eye is opening for the first time and things are coming at you and it's it's not good. <laughs> so hopefully most of you are already through that. But for the people still in the fear phase of awakening, just know that that's kind of like a rite of passage. It doesn't feel like it right now, but eventually you will learn to not be afraid of any of the things that are scaring you, to know that you are more powerful than any of those things that are trying to scare you. And in fact, the things that are trying to scare you are, they're not scary at all. Once you see them as they truly are, once you, like, once they're exposed as what they really are, nothing to be afraid of. So finding silence, silencing your mental body and silencing your 
you know, human biological reactions is, I think, the conscious invitation here to, that's the strategy you can use to work through this <laughs> um, fear of flying, essentially. Fear of trusting, fear of experiencing the magic of life. Okay, and so for the steps we can take to continue launching, to continue flying, getting up off the ground and soaring as we are meant to, we have intuitively, the intuitive side, sharing. I love this because we were just talking about having um, some of us maybe falling into silence because we are afraid to talk about our experiences or we don't have anybody to talk about them with, um, falling into silence, falling into a lack of communication. So here, literally, the solution is find the people you can share these things with. And they are out there, you know. <laughs> find a community on the internet somewhere. The people, the people that you resonate with the most, you can find them. They are out there, I promise you. And then you can find the people to share with. And try if, if you're feeling entirely um, isolated, just ask the universe, hey, can you lead me to my tribe? Lead me to my soul family. How can I find um, the people that I'm meant to share with? And, you know, you can leave a comment in this video and talk about whatever it is that you're that you're going through because chances are your soul family are watching this. You know, I mean, anybody watching this, you have definitely um, known me in other lives. And that means that there's a whole group of you that all know each other and you're all watching this and you can talk to each other in the comments. You know, those of you feeling isolated, like you don't have anybody to share with, <laughs> go ahead and share. That's the invitation here. It's all about that Aquarian networking energy. And on the conscious side, the action side of this spread, what steps do we take? What do we need to do? Seeking understanding. Look at these golden birds. These golden birds out, I'm breaking out of the cage. This reminds you of the Eight of Swords. This is a cage. It looks like this bird is in a cage, but all the other birds are flying around outside. Again, this is like somebody feeling isolated and then finding their soul tribe out there flying around. All this bird had to do was <laughs> realize that the door was already open and all they had to do was walk through it. This is totally an Eight of Swords moment to me. <laughs> So understand that there is a portal there for you. Understand that the door is already open. You just need to go to the door, work up the courage and walk through it because these golden birds, your golden birds are out there soaring around. So I think this is freeing yourself from the cage you think you are in. You are not nearly as trapped as you think you are. Walk out that door. <laughs> walk out the door. Um, for some of you, this is, I think... Um, a portal you're going to be traveling through like on the astral or in the quantum your consciousness is going to be going through a portal it hasn't happened to me in a while but when i first woke up when i was meditating i would often see what i understood to be what i interpreted to be a portal it was like this like purple and blue wavy circle it was all wavy and it would kind of wobble like this like almost like rotating like a clock kind of but then going back and forth and I would go right up to it and I felt like I had to give, you know, myself permission to go through it. I would have to go, okay, yes, I'm ready for this. Take me, like, take me through. Let, let me go through. I, I want to go. And I would go through the portal and then I'd never remember anything after that. But I would remember coming back out of the portal. I would love to know what I did on the other side of the portal and where I went, but I don't have any idea. <laughs> so this, I just keep coming back to this idea of being afraid to fly. I think... One thing we need to understand is that we are more in the driver's seat than we give ourselves credit for. So don't be afraid to affirm what you want to do. Say, yes, I'm ready to go through the portal. Yes, I'm ready to fly. Yes, I'm ready to make that shift. Yes, 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 I'm ready for this. I, I consent to this. I, I am allowing this to happen. I mean, of course, if you really aren't ready, then just say no, and then it won't happen. <laughs> that way you can feel safe knowing that, you know, the universe is going to respect your your statement, right? If you don't consent to something, it's not going to happen to you. So, you know, in terms of your consciousness traveling the universe. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
affirm that you're ready to go through the portal. And then those of you who choose to go through the portal will be able to find your soul family on the other side. And that is something to keep in mind is that if you're at a moment that seems like maybe this bird is kind of like this fool, doesn't know if he can fly. Maybe this bird hasn't, maybe it, you know, it's a baby bird and this is going to be his first flight. Um, but the, this bird, just like the fool, can trust that they're going to fly and knowing that your soul family is up there and they're all waiting for you, that should be able to give you a lot of encouragement to take that leap of faith. Take that leap of faith, trusting in yourself and trusting that, you know, this your soul family members who have gone like one step before you, you know, one flight before you, they're out there waiting for you and, you know, ready to catch you if you fall and ready you know, to invite you and welcome you to the party. Okay, and then this sixth card over here, this is relaxation and acceptance. Interestingly, it says the dream. We have this girl looking up at a dream of what looks to be two lovers. <laughs> Um, if anybody is dreaming of meeting their soulmate, this seems like pretty auspicious for you guys. Um, really, this reminds me of what I have been experiencing so much lately is my dreams. And I know this is true for, you know, most of you. <laughs> my dreams aren't just dreams anymore. They're, they're all like experiences of my quantum life they're astral events you know we are all meeting up on the astral and hanging out and traveling and doing work and having fun and all of that and i feel i just i feel like somebody is dreaming of their soulmate dreaming of their soulmate meeting their soulmate on the astral and then waking up feeling like wow, that was almost, that that felt real. Where are they? Why aren't they here? Why aren't they here? <laughs> I think if you're having those dreams, that means that you guys are getting closer to meeting. And for, you know, everybody who's, your, your dreams and, you know, whatever's going on in your life, if it's not meeting up with a soulmate, this can be, you know, soul family or whatever it is. What are you dreaming of? What are you dreaming of? If that thing that you're dreaming of, whether that's, you know, just the perfect life, whether that's finding physical security, whether that's finding abundance, it's finding a satisfying career, whether that's finding a spiritual upgrade, whatever you're dreaming of, relax into it and, and accept it. Accept it. A lot of the times we feel like the universe is holding things back from us. Why can't I have more money? Why can't I have my soulmate with me? Why can't I have my soul family with me? all of these things, but it, we've actually denied ourselves. I think part of this new energy we're in is really understanding, like once and for all for good, that we have never been the victims of anything. We have literally, each of us, entirely created our reality around us. Anything in our reality that we don't like, we put there because apparently we created a very difficult, challenging, unpleasant game for ourselves. But now that we're getting far enough along and we're starting to shift and we're starting to grow and we're starting to learn, we're starting to realize, oh, none of this was actually bad in the first place. Look at how much I've learned. Look at how much empathy I have developed. Look at how much unconditional love I am unlocking within myself. Look at how everything is coming together. Once you get a little taste of that, it just builds and builds and builds from there. So I just feel like it is really important if you have any like vestiges of, you know, victim mentality to really let that go because this is when, you know, as star blossoms, we understand that we are creator beings and we are creating our reality and <laughs> even dropping the idea that our guides are guiding us I think this is important I know you know everybody wants to hear their guides more clearly I get really fixated on that too because I almost never hear them like you know in words <laughs> um, they communicate with me all the time you know I'm always receiving messages and signs and synchronicities and I'm learning to to like to understand my guidance my internal guidance system 
with much more clarity and precision, but I still go at, oh, you know, why can't I hear my guides? Like, you know, this is no good. I need to figure that out. And I get all, you know, down about it. And I think that's really holding so many of us back. I don't know how it happened, but I think there's like this distortion in spiritual circles where we have got it into our heads that to be spiritually advanced or in order to advance spiritually, we need to be able to hear our guides. We need to be able to have these, you know, English language communication with our guides. And I know that that is how it works for some people. And that's amazing and awesome. And I know that we will all eventually be able to unlock that. But if we don't have that experience now, there's a reason for that. And we are the ones who created this experience for ourselves this way. So I can't hear my guides very clearly. And I'm thinking, why? Why can't I? Why did I do this to myself? What, like, if I were me, and I am me, why can't I hear my guides? And I realized quite a few things as well. First of all, I'm not the kind of person that listens to what anybody has to say. Like if someone's telling me something and I don't like it, I'll just be like, oh, well, you know, forget that. I'm going to do my own thing. Um, and if I had, like when I was just waking up, if I had had voices in my head telling me things, I would have thought I was totally crazy and <laughs> taken a lot of antipsychotics. I can tell you that. And I know that I tend to like to see everything as a system and a game. And I like to watch for synchronicities and I like to watch for signs and I like to watch for subtle shifts in energy. And I like the game of figuring things out. So I really kind of realized I was like, wow, if I designed my own spiritual awakening for myself, which I did, then I would have totally designed it so that I would not have like a clear English language communication with my guides. I would have designed it exactly how I'm experiencing it because it's more fun this way and it's actually more effective because now that I have to watch for the messages coming through and figure it out, <laughs> that actually gets me a lot more interested in it. If I just had my guides telling me things and telling me what to do and giving me advice, I would be like, oh, you're kind of ruining the game. I'd be like, you're backseat driving, you ruined the fun, now there's nothing for me to do. I would just be listening to what they were saying. And as much as I would love that, when <laughs> when I'm having a hard time, overall, I totally see why I have denied myself the experience of hearing my guides clearly. So I know this is a huge tangent from this card, but I feel like this is important for everybody to get away from this idea of fixating on our guides and focusing more on the idea that we all have an internal guidance system, a guidance system, and that guidance system you designed for yourself. It was designed by you, for you, and now you're using it. So it's going to be unique. Your guidance system will not be the same as anybody else's. And you can't, I mean, you can, of course, share your ideas with other people. You can get advice from healers and readers and blah, 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 blah on, you know, next steps. But that's just another way that you have set it up for yourself. Those are all just little ways that you get external information in order for you to help you figure out how to work your own guidance system. At the end of the day, you are going to be the one to perfectly figure out how to navigate your guidance system. So yeah, if I were to just put one thing up on the mountain for that we, sh that we should all, myself, very, very, very much included, is to just put aside this fixation of hearing our guides and focus more on exploring and understanding and navigating our internal guidance system. I think that would be way empowering <laughs> and interesting and effective. So I know that was a big tangent. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna carry on. <laughs> so the final card over here, arrival at a new level of awareness. That's what this position is and intensity. intensity look at this can you guys see there's this like face made of light there's all these like fiery feathers streaming out i have a triangle here <laughs> this being is literally blasting towards the light there's this concentration of light here and it's flaring out like a rainbow and they're blasting towards it so yeah arrival at a new level of awareness i think we're traveling there at light speed i think this year, anybody watching this video, whenever you're watching it, over the next year, I think your consciousness is going to expand and accelerate and increase 
much faster than it has ever before. Like if, you know, I know for myself over the last year, my consciousness has expanded. <laughs> I can't even believe how much in the last year. I can't believe how much progress I've made over the last year, but I think this next year is going to be even bigger. And I'm pretty sure the same goes for most of you guys where you just had a really intense year and this next year is going to be even more intense. But I think once we've gotten to this place of whenever we watch this video, <laughs> you know, whenever we're kind of synchronizing with this particular pocket of star blossom energy, we're over a lot of the hurdles because we're not a star. It's not, we're not just star seeds anymore. Of course, I'm going to keep using the word star seed. I'm not saying throw the word star seed out, but I like this idea. I like this metaphor of no longer being a seed energy. We're no longer in the seed energy. We're now in the blossoming, blooming energy. And that is when everything is speeding up and becoming more intense. And <laughs> rocketing toward a point of light a point of light what does that make you think of to me that makes me think of unity unity consciousness i mean i don't know if we're going to reach unity consciousness itself this year but we are going to be having more and more experiences of unity consciousness can you hear my dog he's growling he agrees he wants unity consciousness right now he's mad that i am doing this and not p-l-a-y ing with him <laughs> so just a sec Okay, the dog is in bed. <laughs> so we all want to rocket towards unity consciousness. That is essentially what everybody wants, right? Um, some of us might have ego death experiences where we reunite with source. The interesting thing about ego death experiences when we reunite with source is that we instantly become very much more interested in our egos and we want to come back to be with the people that we love and to experience our egos for just a little bit longer because we know that source is there always and forever and we can always go back to it but this life is fleeting and we want to live it and get the most out of it while we have the chance so i think in terms of finding unity consciousness we're also going to be experiencing like micro doses of unity consciousness um because like you know you in your own self can be unified unified in your own self you can experience unity consciousness as you you can be united as like one <laughs> one whole self-contained piece of consciousness and you know you can find unity consciousness with you and your partner you can find unity consciousness with you and your soul family whether you meet them on the astral you meet them in your dreams you meet them on the internet somewhere or some of you can actually meet your soul family in person it would be amazing and you know, there's been an idea rolling around in the back of my head about having a shared moment. And I'm not making that word up. I got that from a book. Have any of you guys read the Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons? <laughs> um, amazing series. I can't recommend it enough. Like, holy cow. Um, but there's this idea in that book of having a shared moment where the whole, like all the humans all had essentially like a vision all at the same time. They all had a shared moment and that shifts everybody's consciousness because once, like, could you imagine if all of the humans on earth all had some kind of mystical experience, all blast into their consciousness all at the same time? Maybe everybody experiences a little bit differently with everybody's own subjectivity, but if we all had some kind of shared moment that would change everything. There'd be no going back from that, right? Then everybody would know like for sure <laughs> that there is more out there than just our physical bodies. And I kind of have this hunch, this nagging feeling that I can't get away from that those of us who are walking our paths, those of us who are already awake, I think we might start having like little shared moments with our closest, most resonant soul groups. You know, and I think... I think we're already having those. We're already having those, you know? <laughs> um, like when you're thinking about a quote all day or a movie you just watch and then you find out that, you know, a couple of your friends just watched the same movie or we're thinking about the same movie or you just buy a new deck of tarot cards and then <laughs> somebody else just buys the same deck. You know, all those little synchronicities, those, those are shared moments. People were feeling the same energy and experiencing the same energy just because the energy manifested differently 
for the different people doesn't mean that the energy wasn't shared. So we're already with our most resonant, deepest soul family having shared moments. They're just, you know, they're not super, super obvious, but the energy is shared. That's what's most important. But I think that those, those are just going to get more and more and more, right? As, as our soul groups become closer to becoming like remembering how to be a collective consciousness, we're going to get more and more of those shared moments. And I think they're just going to get, um, you know, to our human minds, weirder and weirder and weirder. And uh, it'll probably take a long time for that kind of experience to ripple out to the whole human collective. But, you know, one day, whenever it happens, eventually humanity will figure out how to be a collective consciousness and all of humanity will have a shared moment. In the meantime, I think we can look forward to an increasing in the intensity of the shared moments we have with our soul family. And... <laughs> Yeah, I just, I know some of you um, watching this, I've had shared moments with you. <laughs> so you guys know who you are and I love that stuff. And I am so excited to have more of that because really like when we have those kind of shared energetic moments, it is just, it is the best. And I can't wait for the day where we can all meet in meditation and travel the astral together, not just in our dreams, but while we're awake and conscious. And I think you know, I don't know when, I have no idea when we're actually going to reclaim that level of, like, mystical abilities, you know, when we're going to reclaim those levels of our soul gifts, but it's coming. I don't know when, but it's like we're on that trajectory. So I find that so exciting. And I would really like to pull one of these crystal oversoul cards. I know nothing about them, so I think I'm just going to draw one. I am going to get to know the deck better and do a pick a card, I think, based around this deck. But for now, <laughs> let's just pull a mystery card and see what we get. This I was so excited. I bought this. I don't know anything about it. Literally, I just bought it because it said crystal oversouls. And a couple of you might have heard me talk about this before, but I've had an experience twice where I felt myself turn into what I call a giant space crystal. <laughs> I could just feel myself as a crystalline being, but I think I was like unbelievably massive. Like this was in some kind of higher dimension and I was out in space or something. And then I was, it was way outside of time. I was having energy. I was breathing in and out, but it was like circular breathing. I was breathing in and out at the same time. There was no in, like there was an in breath and an out breath, but they were simultaneous and it was just so amazing. And I was like, is this like a level of my oversoul? Did I tune into a level of my oversoul? Is there a thing? Like, do we have crystal oversouls? And when I'm doing guided, like when I'm meditating and I want to share my energy with somebody, if I want to share codes with somebody, um, I will do a thing where I ask to have my crystalline over my crystalline light body opened up and that way is I can share codes with people. That's, you know, what I've been guided to do. So <laughs> just for a while, I've been getting these little peaks that there's something about crystalline oversouls and crystalline light bodies. And I know that there are writings out there about this. I've looked it up a little bit. Um, And I know it has something to do with getting your masculine and feminine into balance. And I remember reading a lot more, but I, I don't know. I guess I forgot it. It was like <laughs> like disposable knowledge. Sometimes when I have uh, really fascinating spiritual experiences, I end up not reading about it. I guess I want to experience it more like organically myself and then learn about it later. I guess it's more fun that way. <laughs> so some of you might know more about what I'm talking about, about these crystal oversouls, but apparently it's time for me to learn about that because I bought this deck and I think that that booklet over there is going to have something to teach me. So yes, let's just look at this card and see what it is. Cobalt Aura. I love love, love, love these kaleidoscope images because this is actually what I think the universe looks like. If if you astrally travel up and get a glimpse, like this has only happened to me a couple of times, mostly when I'm sleeping. If you can get a glimpse of a slice of the universe from a high enough level, this is how everything looks. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause. I'm going to read 
the booklet on this one and report back to you. <laughs> okay, so this cobalt aura is apparently known as the star of creation. And I would like to read just the final blurb from the book here. Let the radiant light of my glyph open ancient codes within your memory banks. These codes contain a new potential that is yet to be realized. These codes were placed deep within your memory, memory banks during the later stages of Atlantis to await activation in this lifetime. The Star of Creation glyph has the ability to restore what was forgotten to remind you of your Atlantean light. So this is, from what I understand, both a third eye activation and an activation of our Atlantean codes, which is cool because the last few days I've been having Lemurian energy come up. So this would be the corresponding Atlantean energy for that. And I'm reminded of so much, something I read. I don't remember where I read it, but somebody said <laughs> that consciousness on the planet is finally has finally recovered to where it was in Atlantis like the energy on the planet has recovered to where it was in Atlantis and we are finally about to surpass that so this is really cool if this energy is bringing us an activation to our Atlantean codes this star of creation something we left for ourselves to be finding right now to so we can essentially surpass ourselves in this goes so well with this brand new energy I'm feeling because it was like up until up until the December 2020 solstice we were replaying old patterns we were working through old karma we were untying linear knots we were trying to let go of our baggage and blah 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 and sure we still have some of that still to do it's not like we're done yet but I feel like finally we're going to be making new new patterns. We're going to be going off into completely new territories. We're done repeating the past. We're done just being held back by the past. We are ready to go beyond where we have gone ever before on that on this earth. And that includes, <laughs> you know, those of us who've had really high frequency Lemurian lives and Atlantean lives or in any other ancient civilization. This is like this is it. <laughs> this is it. I see why this card came up. We are surpassing where we were at the height of the Atlantean civilization. Um, of course, that might not be reflected in, you know, society at large, but we are the forerunners, the forerunners. And I was talking to one of my soul sisters the other day about this, how I had been a little curious. I thought it was, I was starting to feel like it was a bit weird. I was like, Every single star seed has had a like past life as a priest or a priestess or a shaman or a healer or some kind of spiritual leader or some kind of magical practitioner, you know, any of those kind of archetypes of spiritual servant or spiritual leader, which is like the same thing, right? If you're a spiritual leader, you're a being of service in a spiritual capacity. And I was starting to think that was a little bit weird. <laughs> and then it hit me and it hit me. It's not that all star seeds are these, have this blueprint of spiritual service. Not at all. In fact, I know a lot of starseeds who clearly do not have this blueprint of spiritual service. The thing is, none of those people have woken up yet. <laughs> those, so those of us who have woken up already, it's because we are the ones with the blueprints for spiritual service. And so obviously we woke up a little bit earlier. It would make sense that if we have all of, we've had all of this training, we have all this experience, we've had all of these past lives as spiritual leaders or spiritual servants or, you know, magical practitioners, whatever it is, of course we would wake up first. That That's like our job. It would be like our job to pave the way to do this because we've done it before, because we have the codes and because we have the experience. So we're here to wake up first and then all of our brothers and sisters who are going to be waking up later are going to have more practical jobs to do. I really feel like once the next waves of starseeds start waking up, they're going to be like the doers. They're going to have very specific missions to change things really in the physical things that 
we, we may be feeling like we haven't had enough of an impact. We've all been sitting around, you know, meditating and clearing our chakras and, you know, expanding our consciousness and doing all of this inner work, but we're, we haven't really, uh, you know, not yet. We haven't really yet made a huge, obvious physical impact. Of course, the energetic and inner work is having so much more of an impact than we ever give ourselves credit for. The work we have been doing is rippling out and literally everything that we've done up until now has gotten us to where we are. <laughs> We're on the other side of the 2020 December solstice and the world didn't shut down. We made it here. Our vibration got us to this, what I think, what I'm feeling is a pretty fucking awesome timeline. All of you doing your inner work got us here. So we've been doing all of the energetic work. It's just not obvious yet in the human physical world. But once all of the other types of star seeds with other types of blueprints, they're going to be waking up over the next 10 years, you know, and doing their projects. And then we're going to start to see the world transform because they're going to be the doers. And, you know, maybe some of us will also start doing things more physically as well, instead of just doing all of this energetic work. Right. But, um, one, other, one other thought I have really been noticing how, when, each of us does our inner work. When we heal something, when we release something, when we clear something, it's like we didn't just do it for ourselves. We literally did it for people who are really closely tied to us. I noticed this. I had a healing with like a healing session with some of my Hadarian soul sisters and it was really profound for me and I think for everybody else who was in the session. <laughs> and and meanwhile, my husband, who is still, he's a, still, he's a sleeping starseed and he was asleep at the time. He woke up and he told me, I'm like, wow, I had this amazing dream and it was so healing. And I really, he was telling me all about it. And I could tell that like he had a very profound healing experience in his dream. And I was like, wow, you know, that was such a clear example of how when we do our inner work and we release things and we clear things, all of our soul family, the ones who, are, who haven't woken up yet, they get to release those things too, even though they didn't consciously do it. They did it like we did it for them. We're, we're all so enmeshed that, you know, we have contracts like that. <laughs> so all of the work you've been doing, that's why it's been so hard because you have been clearing not just for yourself, but for like, you know, thousands of other people. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Give yourself a pat on the back because you have earned it and you deserve it. And onwards and upwards, guys onwards and upwards. So just wishing you the best year and anybody watching this down the line, I just, just welcome to the party guys. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.